My name is Scott Henbury. I am the Vice President of Sales for Saskatchewan and Manitoba with Great Western Brewing Company. Yeah, our support of curling started a number of years ago and we rec recognize that curling is a phenomenal sport that's uh, very popular across all of Western Canada and in fact across all of Canada. Our partnership with, uh, with Team Flash is phenomenal. We uh, love the support that you guys give us. And, uh, and we certainly feel that uh, you know, we have a good partnership with you guys and uh, it's, a, it's a reciprocal relationship and you know, we certainly uh, wish you guys all the luck at the uh, upcoming trials and uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully here back here in Saskatoon. Running the sanctuary absolutely brings me peace. The work is 100% cathartic for me. You know, I find myself getting tied up in it and being busy, and then it's really nice just to sit, breathe in life, and it's beyond zen. Here at Red Arena, we are trying to help people through equine. Good morning, folks. Or afternoon. I guess it's almost afternoon. It'll be afternoon in two minutes here in Penticton, British Columbia. Welcome back to curling.com, sportsnet.ca, and World Curling TV's continuing coverage of the New Floors Penticton Curling Classic. Regardless of what it looks like outside, it is a great day for a great game. John Cullen here alongside Melissa Saligo. And uh, we're going to be covering a fantastic Pool C clash today as Matt Dunstone taking on Jim Cotter. And uh, we're getting a little bonus coverage here. We're going to get a little shot of the, uh, the draw to the button before we set this up. But Melissa, this should be, uh, I mean, this is a huge game. A lot of playoff implications here in, uh, in this Pool C. Absolutely, John. I mean, you got Dunstone at 3-1 and one and Cotter at 2-2. Two and two and this is such a big game for, well, both teams, but obviously Cotter needs a win to, to at least get into the uh, quarterfinals, or the, sorry, the 12s. Yeah, so a unique playoff format here in Penticton. Normally in a curling tournament, you'll see the top eight teams qualify, but in Penticton, because the purse is so big, $86,000 to be exact, <laughs> uh, they've expanded the playoff field to 12 teams. So as you said, Melissa, one, it's uh, a case where the top two teams in each pool That's advance. To the quarterfinals, and then the, the uh, sorry, the, yeah. So the top four teams, the top team in each pool advances to the quarterfinals. Then the remaining eight play off against each other for the right to make it to those quarterfinals. Just watching Matt Dunstone here make his final draw. Yeah, nice sweep there. They will get hammer in this game, but they are also uh, really wanting to get close to the pin because last stone draw could be a huge factor in whether or not they advance. So that was uh, why they were so dialed in on that draw to the button. So Matt Dunstone will start with hammer here. And as we said, Matt Dunstone sitting at three and one and Cotter at two and two. So a Dunstone win here would uh, potentially tie them for the pool lead. Tyler Tardy and Glenn Howard also sitting at three and one out on the ice right now. Glenn Howard playing Sean Geal and Tyler Tardy playing Cameron DeYoung. 
So if both of those two teams win, then Dunstone will want to win to keep pace with them. And I believe Dunstone has the strongest last stone draw. So a win here would uh, assure them the uh, would assure them first place in the pool and would get them that bye to the quarterfinals. So obviously huge for Dunstone. And then as you said, Melissa, uh, for Cotter, they're at two and two. So a win here would get them into a uh, potential tiebreaker scenario with last stone draw to see whether they would get into that round of 12. And a loss would mean that they're out of the tournament. So big game here for both teams, lots on the line. And we get a good look at Andrew Kamladi there and his fantastic mustache slash hair <laughs> combination on uh, sheet E. He's, of course, the third for Cameron De Jong. The good news is he's actually raising money right now, I believe, for uh, cancer research. And when he gets to a certain point, he's going to be shaving that hair and mustache. That is the good news, that I would is say. The good, yeah. news. good news for his wife, probably. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So Team Dunstone here with Hammer in the first. We'll start off with Rick Sawatsky, who we've seen play in, I don't know, how many Briars? I don't actually want, I don't really want to talk about it, to oh, I'm be honest. Sorry. Uh, he defeated me for several of those Briar appearances in the BC Finals. So the less we talk about that, the better for my psyche here. This is our first game of the day, Melissa. I don't want to get too... No, that you're, that's a good point. Okay. I don't want to get too down too early here. But yeah, no, Rick Sawatsky, obviously, uh, I want to say it's... Uh, Nine, maybe? Might be more. Uh, actually, it might be more now because they got the free pass last year, the, the COVID pass to the bubble. So it might be like 10 or 11. I'll look it up. But yes, him and uh, Jim Cotter, obviously longtime friends. Rick has been Jim's lead for, how do, you'd know better than me, Melissa, and BC here, t probably 20 years almost. Nine, I was right. Nice. I'm getting Nine. the, the signal look from Ryan Hartley. It's almost like Hi. I... It's almost like it's hurt me really so much go. I knew that. <laughs> it's almost like they've beaten really you like go. eight out of nine or something like that. I wish. I wish it was that many. It was only two, so I can't <laughs> okay. really, I can't okay. get, you know, can't get two in the weeds here. But, but yeah, no, obviously uh, Jim Cotter been a fantastic player in BC for a long time. Uh, former BC junior champ and, of course, uh, nine-time Briar champion with various lineups. But this lineup is one that would be uh, pretty familiar to most fans of, of BC curling and curling in general. Jim yep. Cotter at skip, please, Tyrell please. Griffith at third, Andrew Nurpin at second, and Rick Sawatsky at lead. Of course, Andrew Nurpin coming onto the team a couple of years ago when Tyrell Griffith decided to step back from curling a little bit, and he just wanted to focus on mixed doubles. A very accomplished mixed doubles player. You'll see him at the mixed doubles trials with his partner Nancy Martin in January. And uh, yeah, he decided he just wanted to focus on mixed doubles, stepped away from the team for a while. So they, at the time, were playing with Steve Laycock and they had brought Andrew Nurpin in to take Tyrell's spot. And then Steve Laycock this season decided to move back to Saskatchewan and play with Ryland Kleider. And so they asked Tyrell to come back on board for a limited schedule and, and he agreed, so. So yeah. that's how we end up with that team. And it's kind of fun watching Jim Cotter. He's playing with his daughter, mixed doubles with his daughter this year. So, you know, focusing a little bit more on that instead of the uh, men's play. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh, it's cool. You know, we, we've been calling a few games this weekend with Glenn Howard playing with his son, Scott. And, you know, Glenn talked about how that was always a, a dream of his. And then Glenn just keeps playing. Everybody sort of thought, oh, he's bringing Scott on the team for his last couple years of curling. And now it's been like six years, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's always super fun, I think, as a parent. Uh, you know, speaking as someone who has no children of his own, I can only imagine it's uh, a pretty fun experience to get to do that with your, with your kid. And of course, uh, Jalen is an accomplished curler herself, BC junior champion, and uh, a great... Uh, a great young player here in, in the province. So. Might be okay, so with that hit and rollout by Andrew Nurpin, this gives a slight opening for Team Dunstone, who they were pretty happy actually to be, you know, willing to hit this end out if they had to. But with that hit and roll out of the rings, they're throwing up a corner guard. Yeah, we'll see if Jim decides to peel it or if he's uh, willing to dance a little bit here. And it looks like he is just going to peel. Cotter, of course, without Hammer, put his first rock in the house. So he it seems like he was inviting the blank right from the start. So yep. not going to be too unhappy here to have Andrew Nurpin peel this out. 
And of course, Matt Dunstone's lineup would look familiar to uh, most people as well, as it's been the lineup for the last couple of years for this team. Matt Dunstone, of course, at skip, Braden Moscoe at third, Kirk Myers at second, and Dustin Deuce Kidby at lead. <laughs> And we said this last night, Melissa, but uh, Team yeah, Dunstone going with the, the mix and match jackets uh, today as well. They've got Moscoe and Kidby in the black and Dunstone and Myers in the white. I said last night that they, if you lined them up in the right way, they would look like a double stuff Oreo. <laughs> I love it. So I don't know if that's anything, but. I don't know. But I'll say it again. Why not? Oh, I think that's, I love that. That's, that's hilarious. being right off the whole way. I like the I like the home and away jackets. I think it's cool. I mean, I assume they you know normally would be matching, uh, but uh, I like uh, I love the idea of a team having two different color jackets that they can swap in and out. Makes it uh, just a little more interesting to look at out on the ice. So continuing with the peel here, and obviously yeah. both teams very happy with yeah. potentially no. keeping the blank. You can see Matt now not even going to put up a corner guard. Just going to draw one into the rings. 15 here, or not quite. Well, this is probably where, for Matt Dunstone, he thinks, oh, we'll get Braden a chance to just see what draw weight is doing. And we've also seen on this sheet D that, uh, you know, some of the paths can act a little bit differently once they've Good. had rocks thrown down them. There, so maybe Matt thinking, you know, uh, in the third end, I might need to use this path for a draw to the button for a point or two. So you know, wanting to maybe wear that down a little bit more than a corner guard path that's perhaps not as important. You heard them say 14-1, that's the speed between the two hog lines. We're usually looking at about 14 and a half, 15. So that one just slipping to the back of the four. And of course it's a, a big game for a lot of teams out here today. Yep. Uh, over on sheet A, we've got Jason Cam facing off against Jonathan Buke. Yep. John Buke sitting at three and one. So they're looking for, uh, they're another team that's looking for a win to try and improve, improve their playoff positioning. Beside them, we've got two eliminated teams, John Epping facing off against Neil Dangerfield. And beside them, we've got Sean Geel facing Glenn Howard. As we said earlier, big game for Howard sitting at three and one. And, would love to get to that four and one spot and potentially win this pool C. Beside our feature sheet, we've got Tyler Tardy facing off against Cam DeYoung. And again, as we said earlier, big game for Tyler Tardy as they're sitting at three and one and would again, love to get into that four and one situation in this pool. And then over on sheet F, another pool decider between Yuta Matsumura and Sebastian Robillard. Matsumura's four and oh so far, Robillard three and one. So if Robillard beats them, they would actually win the pool by virtue of the head-to-head -head record. So big game there for, uh, for a lot of the, the teams out on the ice. We'll try and keep you updated on all the action. And if you'd like to watch two of the other feature games, we do have John Epping and Neil Dangerfield available for you and Sean Geel versus Glenn Howard. You can check both of those out at Curling Live's YouTube page. You can have a little triple box going on this Saturday afternoon. So Jim Cotter will roll out here, which will give Matt Dunstone a chance to get a free draw here and maybe feel out his draw weight a little bit. I can also say, uh, you know, just peeking over to sheet E where Tyler Tardy's playing Cam DeYoung. Tardy didn't, he slipped behind the button for his draw to the button. So they were hoping for a little bit better. Their, their number is a little higher than they wanted yeah. it to be. So they almost need to win that yeah. game, I think, 15. to be in a good position I'm after the sure end of this draw. Like, like, I've got the head nod the by Coach Paul over seconds. sitting next to me. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, something that's been more commonplace in curling over the last few years is the last stone draw. So teams now draw for hammer as opposed to the old days where you used to just flip a coin for hammer. And uh, it's not that you just get the hammer in the game, but you record how far you are from the button for each draw. And then what's happening at this event is every player had to throw at least one of those draws. So you could have one player throw two and then the rest of the team throws one and they're taking the four out of your best five. So that was uh, 
that's how it kind of works, and that's what will determine some of the uh, some of the tie breaking that we're going to do later on today. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about that. So as we said in this pool, I believe Matt Dunstone has the best last stone draw. Glenn Howard uh, next, and then Tyler Tardy third. So certainly a big win for Tardy, and especially if they go to if they f lose this game and they fall to three and two, then now all of a sudden they're competing with the other three and two teams and. Looking at the standings, Melissa, it seems that uh, three and two will get you into that last stone draw tiebreaker, but one team at three and two will not make the playoffs. So we could be in a situation where we have either three or four teams, or sorry, four or five teams at three and two. And if that were the case, then it would be one of those teams would not make it into the round of 12. So you certainly wouldn't want to find yourself in that situation. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So Matt Dunstone just Art. picking a different path on his Art. draw and Do it. Do it. gives Art. Jim Cotter the opportunity to change his hit up and he's going to hit and roll out. So I think we're pretty much concluded the blank. Yes, we have, yeah. I mean, I assume so. You don't think he's going to draw for one? I mean, I'd be pretty surprised if he drew for uh, one. I would too, yeah. Just on this side of center. Yeah. So final stone here for Matt Dunstone and we will just watch that one sail through the rings and we'll throw a couple zeros up on the board here in the first. So when we come back, it'll be Dunstone continuing to retain Hammer. You're watching a huge Pool C clash from the final draw at the Penticton at New Floors Curling Classic. We'll be right back. sanctuary absolutely brings me peace. The work is 100% cathartic for me. You know, I find myself getting tied up in it and being busy, and then it's really nice just to sit, breathe in life, and it's beyond zen. trying to help people through equine therapy. Working with the veterans has been a very amazing experience. Our little motto that we always say is empowerment through horses. I love what I do. I'm just happy to be a part of it. I'm Troy Slater, uh, Greenbrier Golf and Country Club and uh, Greenbrier Estates and DNS Homes. Well, currently we have uh, 143 lots in Phase 1 and Phase 2, which is, have been underway for a while now. Uh, and as you can see around Greenbrier, it's, uh, it's, it's a great developed area just on the outskirts of Saskatoon. And now we've just started uh, Phase 3 and uh, we have another 54 lots available for, for sale now. to landscaping. I've studied soil down to the microbes. It's that level of detail I bring to my work and to my business. Straight lines and a healthy ecosystem is what I'm all about.
this. Never go leave ahead, it. Yep. Go ahead, go ahead. Whoa. Hello, folks, and welcome back to continuing coverage of the New Floors Penticton Curling Classic, live from Penticton, British Columbia. John Cullen Great alongside side. Melissa Saligo is recovering the last round robin draw here. The fifth and final game for both of these two teams. We're watching Jim Cotter face off against Matt Dunstone. And after a tentative blank in the first end, Melissa, we've got some stones in play after some very nice shots from Dustin Kidby and Rick Sawatsky. Yeah, both leads 100% here in the second end. Uh, center guard up by uh, Team Cotter. The one by Dustin just slipping. It was right on the tee line, actually, and just a perfect shot by Rick Sawatsky to freeze to it. And then the uh, Dustin second stone uh, over curled just slightly, but it's enough poking out on the other side that they'll be able to use it if they need it. And there's one there by Andrew Nurpin. So both teams ready to go here. Just nose it for now, kill one, jam one. If you get a little inside, so be Hack. it. Hack! Hack nose! Of course, this uh, event presented by New Floors. And New Floors Penticton in particular, owned by Brad and Annette Wood, just two fantastic supporters of curling. You can check out their website at newfloorspenticton.ca for all your flooring and carpeting needs. And this draw in particular is also presented by Copper Mug, Cannery Brewing, and Castanet. Castanet, I think, is the... Uh, Clean! Just Local through. like uh, news Hard service here hack. in the Okanagan. Hack. Just clean. Easy, 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 easy. Clean. Hack. So Kirk Myers looking at about half clean. Wade here would just love hack. to get to the Whoa. nose of this redstone clean. just thrown just by Team Cotter. Whoa. Nose are inside to move things can. around. Yep. All you can, all you can, all you can. Great shot. Really good from Kirk there. Gotta freeze maybe the pocket of those blues. Or we, or we so already Cotter in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah. They got better angle there. You can hear Jim saying they do Remember have the better angles, meaning uh, the blue stones in a little, little risky, I guess. A little better positioning right now. So I think this is the because call. Were, Try and put one like right in front of those blue stones that you can use it. Maybe. Any good? I like this. He likes this, and let's play that. Short's okay. There's, this is their draw to the button spot, so it'll be similar, yeah. So you hear them talking about position of this rock, John. Ideally, they'd like to, to freeze Up to the blue floor. stone to be able to use it. Anywhere on that line is actually yep. a usable placement of this stone. They, they need something available to them, I think, in probably a rock yep. or two. They don't Up really floor. want to overcurl this. Yeah, that was not not a good option, but it yeah, rolls out to an okay spot. But yeah, this is starting to feel like that red one's getting a little bit a uh, little bit cold and shivery. <laughs> it's October; it's handcuffing season, <laughs> Melissa, and uh, that red is looking for a partner. It really is. He, he's coming into here. Eh? The blue one. The blue one. So in the other, in one of the other key pool C battles, Glenn Howard out to an early two nothing lead on Sean Geal after the first. Geal with the hammer, they're playing two, and Tyler Tardy this, making this a fantastic yep. shot with his last one no. to score one against Cameron De Jong. Knows it's a pretty big double into here. Yeah, let's do this. I think if it was mine, maybe. I'm with you too. No, no, I'm with you. Throws 15. So Team Dunstone feeling like they're in a very good position right now, obviously with those two blues pretty much surrounding that red, one red stone that's just biting the side button. They don't want to move it just yet, so they're trying to set up an angle blue onto blue, which is really what Jim Cotter was trying to do here. So don't need to move this blue stone, just needs need to be on the kind of the corner angle of it. Back eight. But you... Uh, you heard the weight, it's a back Let's eight, so not really what they called here, so plan B or C or D. Yeah, just a little heavy from Kirk Myers. And so this uh, might open the door for Jim Cotter a little bit to recover from Andrew Nurpin's miss. I think if Kirk could have got that frozen, it's... <laughs> 
<laughs> Connor would have been in a lot more. I mean, he's already in trouble. They're already having to have a discussion here. That's probably no, because they got us both sides. Yeah, they do. <laughs> this one, more likely to jam. This one, they can make. Could try and uh, just pick this one if it does clip. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, half a rock and kind of jam it. Half jam a rock it and jam here. it. Yeah. We sit shot rock, we open it up. And then they got that one. They freeze and we got the run. The only thing is, this is no that angle is horrible. What about the two in? On the angle on this side is good for us. He's got it's easy for him. Yeah. The other option. It's the other this option. One? Is, or that tap that you called. It's really tricky. But if we tap, then he, yeah. Then he slashes that. Big discussion here, not a, not a lot of great options here for well, Jim. And like I said, it just goes to show how much trouble they were in. Kirk missed his shot, and they're still in, they're still in the tank here. Jimmy, what was Swat, you got? I agree Swat with Rick's this. comment there, though. The left-hand side, as we're looking at it, is in decent, there. decent position right now for Team Cotter. Not great, but yep. the potential jam on, on red onto blue is there. So maybe oh, wanting to play on the right-hand side of the sheet as we're looking oh, at it. Yeah, if I, I think the pro side is light, eh? Pro okay. side is light. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think this is the right call. I, I would leave the left side right now, try and get one. This is the shot that uh, I believe Andrew was trying to make on his first one. If they could freeze into the pocket of those two blue stones, at least give them something to use yeah. on their next shot. So Tyrell Griffith trying to freeze right in there on top of that blue stone. This one's way out there, John. They're yeah, don't want to be okay. short here, but I yeah, think guys. they are. Pulls you just, uh, we've Pulls seen this on this sheet D, you just get a little bit outside the draw path and okay. that's yeah, what good. happens, so. Yeah, that's This is, this is trouble, <laughs> this is trouble here for, for Team it's Cotter. Easy the right weight? Cause, Cause you can make this, right? Nose it is not great, but. I want to go hard for the nose, I think. What's that? I think nose is best, don't you? Knows he rips that double, triple almost. Then we got a, this is what I don't love. Boom, okay. boom, Andy's in front of us. Can we throw a weight where we can, because I think this is the best shot if we can nut this into here. So I just don't know how he gets in there. If we can find a way to get, like you can hit three quarters, right? I think it's the best shot. Again, I, knows is fine. Okay, pick the weight that makes it best. Hard easy? I've only got a big half, two thirds. That, yeah, just easy then? Just. I'd rather nose it than hit a quarter rock. You know what I mean? What? <laughs> we could just play this again. Like, I don't know what he does here. Jeez, he's in a lot of trouble if we make that good. I think just play this again. Okay. <laughs> so they were they were sure they had the shot. Okay, so Braden Moscow he made it all the way down to the other hog line, but then he then he got <laughs> pulled back in. And Braden's not 100% convinced he can see enough of the blue stone that's on the eight foot on the right hand side of the center line there. He needs to get to the nose of it in order to remove that red stone. So he's gonna guard. Okay, so maybe we do play it then. This might be the call right now. <laughs> now they are going now to play Now they're going it. back to the original call. Okay, 
I mean, it's funny, you know, Melissa, that obviously the team's not on time clocks on these events. And, and people, you know, in the chat are, oh, why don't they have time clocks? And I think people don't realize how much of an investment it is to have time clocks, not even from a monetary perspective, but from a time perspective. You have to have volunteers willing and able to run every single sheet. Absolutely. A lot of times they're not trained, so then you end up in situations where maybe you have a conflict between the teams on the ice and the timekeepers. And it just is not really feasible for these events. Uh, but then it lends itself to maybe teams taking a little longer than you're used to seeing on TV. And I think it's funny, you know, this is the third event now I've called in a row for curling.com without time clocks. And it's usually the first instinct is the one they go with. Yeah, they talk about it for three minutes and then they pick the original shot they like. Isn't that a go with your gut kind of thing? Yes, I think so. So that was a slight miss from Braden Moscoe, but it's not a bad result. No, it's not a bad result. And... and you know, again, Jim almost has to look at what does, how does Matt get in there right now? I think there's two, still two shots, but they're not easy. They have to navigate a port on one side and they have to get to the face of the one on the, on the other side. So having a look at it there, do you think about maybe throwing a, I don't know, a guard or even the freeze again, trying to get a redstone in the rings to at least Pretty damn tough, but like, <laughs> papers, the well, Tyrell said, damn, that's how you know it's serious. They could sit three. I think this is why they blanked the first like, end, John, just yeah, so they could bank some time for this end. Yeah. Great, here's really good. Yeah, okay, let's get one in. Yeah. It's a nice spot here, we know the spot. Draw yeah, the I like that. Yeah. I kind of agree with Jim, you, you need to get one in. There's a lot of blue stones what hanging like out in this house. You can either guard or come in, the only thing is, Guard, we're just leaving our one in there. If he gets it out, it's like a four ball. If we go back, four ball kind of back button on this. It would really be a, indeed a four ball. I'm ready. I'm ready for that in case yeah, I need it. Nice on top here, of it. So after the discussion, we, I believe they have decided to throw another redstone into the rings. Maybe back button, back four. They want it to be. T line. T line or just a little Hold bit better. The last thing they want to do is yep. set up any kind of double Those here for Matt Dunstone. Four. So T or a little better. Gotta go. Gotta be at least I think this is light too. Wow. Jim is uh, <laughs> Jim Chance. banging his broom there, trying to encourage yep, the rock yep, to yep, go, yep, and yep. it's just a little Yikes. short. I think guard was the pro side, but uh, I do. but as you say, it's it's firm. one very lonely red firm. in there. Inch of ice. And you can see what a great shot right there. You can see that it... Uh, just firms, good, Ducey. Yeah, there's, there's space. Not right. a lot of space. It's a pretty tight port. But if you ever make this, if Braden can make this, I'm not sure what Jim Cotter's going to do. I like just a pinch more. Cry. <laughs> it's hard, though. Like, I can't miss it wide. I think Braden just needs to you get like in the hack room? and throw it, not... Okay overthink it here. I just think I'll get that inch, so I'm going to be aggressive with it. Pro side miss might be hitting the one on the center line. Yep, for sure. So big shot here for Braden Moscoe. Trying to get through a tight uh -huh. hole and get rid of that lonely oh, red. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. He's yep. close. And what how about a that? shot. Phenomenal shot from Braden Moscoe and it is Team Dunstone lying three with the hammer. Lying three, but also lying fifth and sixth shot. So wow. this is uh, this is what we call trouble. Try to make this. You like that? So elimination options here for Jim Cotter. Trying to play the double, nose double on these two stones. Again, the port hasn't gotten any bigger, John. It's the same size that Braden just threw. But they, yeah, not easy. they have to get another redstone in there and there's really no other option here. I mean, there's a wide out turn draw, but yeah, no, you're going out into the wings. Well, yeah, and if you ever put it in a position where you can double out that red and lie exactly. six, it's not great, so. Huge shot here for Jim Cotter with his first. 
Love to get through that port. Whoa, whoa. Nose hit double. Whoa. He looked a little positive on that whoa. release. Curl. Curl. Ouch. And that is not it, as the kids would say. Yeah. We, we know this, he triples, we draw for three. Well, and that's also, he's saying it pretty casually, like <laughs> it's not an easy triple, so. And it's a triple. And so. it's a triple, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's always good when you're leaving yeah. your opponent a triple to hold you to three. Last night, like yeah. with that much ice. Yeah. How's that with Let me know what you think from the hack. I think that's gonna be good yeah. for you though. Like if we do that, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Just commit to it, right? Yeah. So far, I think this is the easiest shot of the end. Nose hit. Yeah, after the original center guard, I think this is the uh, probably the easiest yeah. one. Yeah. Nose is the shot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's gonna look hard. Yeah, it was just. It's funny you look back on the end and Rick Sawatsky making a really good shot with his second, but he just separated the blue from the red, and that's what ended up causing them the trouble. And it just goes to show, is curling. We talk about it being a game of inches, but that's truly. Swatsky maybe heavy by about two feet, moves the rock about three inches further than they wanted to, and they've been in trouble ever since. So Matt Dunstone with his first in the second with hammer, just looking for a hit and stick to lie five. And so a little mistake there from Matt Dunstone. Rolls out and now the triple is to force Dunstone to two, which... You can see how upset Matt is. I mean, a nose hit there and what we would say a, a relatively easy shot and the hit and roll out. He's definitely not happy with himself. So if Jim Cotter can hit what he can see, maybe about half a rock actually, so a little less than what he can see. He should be able to get the triple. Like and I say that very non-casually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a casual triple. <laughs> so final stone for Jim Cotter. Looking to do some damage control. Yep. Yep. Yes! Yep! Hard! Sweepers Hard! on it right away. Gotta get by. They get by, but they will only get okay. two. So, perhaps deservingly, Dunstone will have a shot for three here. Easy and right we've seen this a few times this week on this sheet D. It just draws are no gimme, especially when you get out into the wings of the 12-foot. So, electing to hit here, I'm not super surprised by that. I'm not either, and there was really no question that he was going to try and hit this one, and he's got the whole house to roll to. Take just a pound off, not even. Like, we're going out further, so. Okay. Okay, yeah, I think we're keeping brooms down on this, boys. So Matt Dunstone, final stone in the second. Needs a hit for three. Yep. Whoa, whoa. Clean. Whoa, whoa. off. Clean. And he will not roll out this time, so a very solid end from Matt Dunstone, but perhaps Jim Cotter dodging a five or six point bullet. But it is uh, three points for Matt Dunstone here in the second. When we return, it'll be Jim Cotter's first chance with the hammer. You're watching the new floors, Penticton <laughs> Curling Classic live good on curling.com. Well, good throw. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, I'm Troy Slater, uh, Greenbrier Golf and Country Club and uh, Greenbrier Estates and DNS Homes. Well, currently we have uh, 143 lots in phase one and phase two, which is, have been underway for a while now. Uh, and as you can see around Greenbrier, it's, uh, it's, it's a great developed area just on the outskirts of Saskatoon. And now we've just started uh, phase three and uh, we have another 54 lots available for, for sale now. Running the sanctuary absolutely brings me peace. The work is 100% cathartic for me. You know, I find myself getting tied up in it and being busy, and then it's really nice just to sit, breathe in life, and it's beyond zen. Northern Credit Union, a true partner, sweeping you to financial victory, keeping your dollars where they belong. Here at Red Arena, we are trying to help people through equine therapy. Working with the veterans has been a very amazing experience. Our little motto that we always say is empowerment through horses. I love what I do. I'm just happy to be a part of it. Hello, folks, and welcome back to continuing coverage of the New Floors Penticton Curling Classic, live from Penticton, BC. John Cullen alongside Melissa Saligo here as we're watching the final draw of the round robin for these teams. Three and one Matt Dunstone against two and two Jim Cotter in a must-win game for both teams. And Melissa, it's a great start for Team Dun Dunstone as they put three up on the board. It was a very messy end, as we all saw, higher and the better, the better here. Higher you know, the a couple here. of misses late in the end by uh, Team Jim Cotter, and unfortunately, well, fortunately, actually, he had a triple, and I say that again, a triple on his last one. Does man manage to get the deuce, but uh, still gives Matt Dunstone the open hit for three. So a three is almost an escape, because it was looking like five at one point. Yeah, certainly. Well, and with the triple not coming off, uh, you know, Matt Dunstone did miss his first one, rolled out on a hit, so it would have been for four. So even just that alone, uh, Jim Cotter feels like he might have uh, escaped a little bit. And uh, Tyler Tardy also escaping a little bit here on sheet E as well. Cameron DeYoung with an open draw for two on his last, and unfortunately uh, he racked the guard. So it's only one for De Jong, So that's a, a tie game there. And it's uh, looking to be close to a done deal on sheet C. Glenn Howard with a four ball of extreme knowledge, you told me Of to extreme say. knowledge, yes. A steal of four uh, in the second end. So Glenn Howard leads Sean Giel 6 nothing. Of course, we know Howard at, in this pool also at three and one. So... A win here would put Howard into the playoffs and with a chance to win the pool and get the bye to the quarterfinals, we're Dunstone to lose this Hard one. So, yep. so big uh, big implications yep. everywhere uh, here at the Pinterton yep. Curling Club. Clean. Yep. So Team Cotter trying to find a way Hard to right get to a deuce it. right back here. They uh, threw up whoa, the corner whoa. guard. Yep. I don't Rick Sawatsky good. slipping to the back Gosh, of the yeah. rings there and because of the space between those two red stones good that throw. we just saw what Kirk Myers was able to do, the nice soft hack throw. weight on the outside in was, hack at the end, yeah. was able to get yeah, access throw. to that Let one that was that. back 12. <laughs> so yeah, it's Dunstone lying three without hammer here. Throw. So chance here for Andrew now to get around that corner again. Would like to be T-liner line. better. Line, back eight. Line's good. That's a hair heavy. Back out. Go here. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're here them saying back there house. They don't. They got the angle right. They could be right on top of the blue stone if it is deep. That angle looks pretty good. 
It's got to stop. Stop, though, yep. And it will. So, rip in the corner here, sitting two is Matt Dunstone. Here you go, bite. Of course, Matt Dunstone, uh, the number one ranked team in Saskatchewan, and as you might imagine, they have a lot of great support in Saskatchewan from their sponsors. It's a long Please. list, Melissa, so strap Just in. Clean. Okay, I'm ready. They're sponsored by Agromax, Pleasant Valley Farms, Ridgel. Quarks Urban Trail, Apex Plumbing and Heating, Galon Insurance Brokers, Caledon Equipment Leasing, Sask Canola, Norstar, Core Grain yeah, Systems, Connexus Credit Union, Inlet Auto Line Products, Atlas Apex Roofing, Michelle's, and their equipment sponsor is Hardline and Dynasty. Wow. So there you go. We covered them all. You did. A lot of companies I don't know uh, much about because I live in BC no, and there's no farms around me. <laughs> so it's nice. It's I'm learning. Real tight. Scoot over, curl. Real tight. So with that Real peel tight. of guard by uh, Team Dunstone, Simmer, Andrew looking to put another one up, but you can hear him saying it's over curling. Okay. All right. Not too bad. It's still there. Usable. Yeah, I think that's... Seen it? Not bad at all. Just talk. I'm gonna try and give you a back line, boys. So this is one where Braden Moscoe will get this one a little tight. The pro side here would obviously be to clip that guard and move it out of the way. Whoa. He said he was gonna throw Whoa. back line. This Off looks like a little hotter this. than that. Clean. Nope. Whoa. Off. Clean. Can't. Clean. Can't. Can't, can't, can't. <laughs> Good shot. And that's a nice shot nice from Braden, shot. and it's Dunstone lying four without the hammer here in the third. Let's make the weld here. So big shot here for Tyrell. You got to make sure you're somewhere very close to the face of this one. Yeah, you heard Tyrell. They need to weld it on. Yeah, it's just fine, I think. Give you a touch less than my last one. Hey, line's good. As we hit third stones here, obviously Jim Cotter knows he needs to get a deuce back sooner than later. Got a curl. I mean, it's, you get look better, at all those blue yeah. stones around the rings, and you're like. How? Concerned, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How is right. This one's got too much weight, I think. Yeah, this one's skating a bit. Oh, yeah. boy. So it's uh, going to be another situation here where <laughs> Jim Cotter facing a, a lot of blue guys in the rings here. Or blasted out. Don't hate getting back four here. I think throw smooth if you roll out. You like that? <laughs> Brain Moscow, he's going to try to play the hit and roll, the precise roll to the back of the forefoot, but as Matt said, if you roll out, that's not a bad thing either. Yep. Hard. Less for Jim Cotter to use. Hard! Whoa, hard! That kind of weight, you think it's going to roll out, but... Great yeah. Really good spot from Moscow there, so it is Dunstone lying five without last rock here, and... This is uh, not very yeah. fun for Jim Cotter <laughs> right now. It is not. <laughs> Team Dunstone, like what we say, is firing on all c we'll cylinders all right now. And yeah. Jim Cotter just trying to find a way good. with three red yeah. rocks to go here. Blue line five. Yeah, what kind of weight do you like? Trying to find a way to control? score two. Do like do you like so they're going to play the yeah. hit and roll, no, I believe, on the like. one that's sitting top four. What do they think it's going to do here? It's gradual? I think gradual, yeah. Control? I think it's going to move a little. You like that? I'll be like easy control. Okay. I like that. Yeah. A little hit and roll. Control. Yeah. Exactly. Just gotta get it two thirds under. So I, I think suffice to say, Melissa, the roll very key here. Very key, obviously. You know, you heard Tyrell say two thirds under. Showing them a piece isn't a bad thing, but yep. the roll yep. is the most important thing here. Yep. Yep. 
Seems to be throwing a oh, lot of oh, weight. I'm oh. surprised by the weight he was throwing. Yeah, it hung out there and they were able to make a little audible thin double there. So that mitigates the damage a little bit. Yeah. But it is still Dunstone line too. We want to be to it. Like yep. here puts a little pressure on you if he makes that. Yep. Yeah, we want to be to it. We want to make it good. Even here we're... That's okay too. Yep, yep. you betcha. Okay. Thank you. Uh... That's it. So this is what we had. You betcha. Here, eh? Okay. Always so love be... listening to Braden talk. <laughs> like like we got to make sure we have to. enough ice. Yep. So that, I know uh, okay. I had some, some friends come and watch me play for the first time ever when we when provincials were at the Vancouver Curling Club, and they both said that I spoke more Canadian when I was curling, that they had never heard me talk like that. And I, I feel like Braden is in the same boat. You betcha. Oh, you betcha. I love it. <laughs> so Matt Dunstone looking for the freeze here on that redstone that uh, landed behind the guard by Tyrell. If they ever get one welded onto that stone uh, with two red rocks to go, Jim's gonna have to pull out some magic. Yeah, if Matt makes this one, tough to see how Jim scores two exactly. That's all you need is back four. Real, just get the depth. Don't worry about line. Real, a foot or two behind the tee. Okay. Sweepers like Looks the weight. There, but, oh, line's good. It's right on my broom, Kirk. Okay, can't bounce on the line. Can't bounce on, we're okay though, we're okay. Great shot. Good job, guys. Just Good. nice shot by Matt. Yeah, that works. Like they said, that was that was the you betcha call, was that they could come <laughs> to either the red or the blue there, just as long as they were in front and and as long as they were third shot. So nice shot for Matt Dunstone. Freeze, we'd have that double for three. Yep. Even if we rolled, we roll well, it'd be nice you, to spin up. It would be. Even if you, you hit like rolled that? just dead frozen, it's pretty good. Pretty good too, yep. You like that? Do you like I good think regular? playing a freeze here is pretty tough. Yeah. Well, they get so precise, right? Agreed. And we haven't really, like, draw weight's not really That's super easy, easy, so. Okay. I like this. Like, uh, what kind of weight? I'm thinking, like, control, or, like, good control. Okay, good control. You like that? It's, like, probably. It's, like, a thick, thick half? Thick half, exactly, yeah. So the two options they looked at, John, obviously, was to play the freeze on this one that's back four. The other option and the one that they, they've elected to go with is the hit and roll. So they don't really up, need guys. to make the double, but if they can make ever- this double and roll up a yeah, little. Yeah, if they can ever push that blue one even yeah, a couple of feet way, to the right and roll right up, up the in front of their redstone, there is the potential of setting themselves up for three. They need a miss by Matt Dunstone, obviously. So double and spin up is the call. Big yep, shot here yep, for Jim yep, Cotter. Yep. Oh, Jim's looking back. I'm not sure yep. if he felt it picked or not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, it's ah, certainly not making the double. Okay. And so Dunstone will have just an open hit here to lie three. Go yeah, like you said, Jim looked just back easy. like maybe it just picked. I, I don't know. Easy. I didn't see the, uh, it, the rotation on the rock increase, but like it might have been something he felt in his hand. Yeah, it looks I'll like he felt it right in his hand as he was trying to put his release yep. on. So just a quick clean up there by the front end of Matt Dunstone. Just just easy. Matt throwing easy weight here. Yeah, you bet, right on the snout. Yep, yeah, roll it kind of behind it. But. So as you heard Matt say, right on the snout. <laughs> Just uh, looking to hit and stick right there, and and it'll be up to Cotter to decide whether he wants to draw or hit against three. So final stone for Matt Dunstone here in the third without hammer. Get rolling. 
one, Kirky. Ah. Sorry, guys. Troll? So maybe they were trying to roll. I, I heard Matt say that he wanted to hit it right on nose in the hack, but they seemed a little frustrated they didn't completely roll behind that blue one, which makes sense. That might have forced Jim into drawing, and draws exactly. are no gimme here. So I think that's what they were trying to do is, is, is the roll that might have been a, a late game call, but nose hit here for Jim Cotter. Not a gimme either by any means, but a nose hit to get on the board. So final stone, Jim Cotter facing three. Needs a hit and stick. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep. Hard. Hard. You can hear Tyrell. Yeah, this is curling. Desperate here, right, trying to get it, hold it. Andrew trying to hold it. Nice and he brushing. will. So great sweep from Andrew Nurpin and That'll put one on the board for Jim Cotter, but it's been so far a masterclass from Team Dunstone as they lead three to one and they will take the hammer into the fourth end. You're watching the New Floors Penticton Curling Classic live on curling.com. sanctuary absolutely brings me peace. The work is 100% cathartic for me. You know, I find myself getting tied up in it and being busy, and then it's really nice just to sit, breathe in life, and it's beyond zen. trying to help people through equine therapy. Working with the veterans has been a very amazing experience. Our little motto that we always say is empowerment through horses. I love what I do. I'm just happy to be a part of it. Troy Slater, uh, Greenbrier Golf and Country Club and uh, Greenbrier Estates and DNS Homes. Well, currently we have uh, 143 lots in phase one and phase two, which is, have been underway for a while now. Uh, and as you can see around Greenbrier, it's, uh, it's, it's a great developed area just on the outskirts of Saskatoon. And now we've just started uh, phase three and uh, we have another 54 lots available for, for sale now. Hello folks and welcome back to the continuing coverage of the New Floors Penticton Curling Classic. Live from Penticton Curling Club. John Cullen alongside Melissa Saligo. As you're watching the final round robin game here between Matt Dunstone and Jim Cotter. And Melissa, it's been all one way traffic so far. Matt Dunstone with a 3-1 lead, but it almost feels uh, a little more commanding than that. They've, they've been in control. It really does. They, they've been very precise. I think they've in. only maybe had a, a half oh, shot miss or like that. and that was the hit and roll out in the second end by Just Matt. Back four, back eight. Team Cotter really struggling with rock placement and trying to get a handle on what these red stones are doing. They've got the pass down, like their, their pass I find are, are good. It's just a matter of weight control at this point. So double guard goes up by Rick Sawatsky and uh, now trying to find a way to force or steal here in the fourth end. Back 12. Clean. Down Back two eight. isn't much, Easy. but it Back is a 12. lot. It can, Back it can line. feel like a lot, especially when you don't have hammer. Clean. You feel like yep. you're maybe a two yep. away from being out of the Three game. Clean up. 
So, and of course we know Dunstone will be looking to uh, control the scoreboard here a little bit and really good shot by Dustin Kidby there. Uh, you know, would love to score in this, in this even end, even if it's only one and keep control of the hammer in the even ends. So looking around at the out of town scoreboard, which is very much inside this town and inside this very <laughs> building we're in here. Uh, over on sheet A, a big game for Jonathan Buke as they're facing off against Jason Cam. That's tied 1-1. Cam has the hammer. They're playing four. On sheet B, a game that we have coverage of, if you go to Curling Live's YouTube page and you want to watch John Epping scoring a two to put the first two on the board against Neil Dangerfield. And so Epping leads 3-1. Dangerfield with the hammer. They're playing five. Over on Sheet C, another one of our feature games as you can watch on Curling Live's YouTube page. Glenn Howard leads Sean Geel 6-1. to one. Howard with Hammer. They're playing the fourth. And uh, Tyler Tardy with a very difficult uh, angle run back on his last in the third was not successful. So Cam DeYoung with a big steal of one in the third. So it's DeYoung leading 2-1 to one over Tardy, of course, we said that's a, a crucial game for Team Tardy to uh, to get a victory to ensure their spot in the playoffs. And another big game on Sheet F, Sebastian Robillard with a two in the third end against Yuta Matsumura. That is for, uh, this game is for first place in Pool A. So if Robillard can win, that would uh, secure a spot in the quarters for them. So they're up by two and Matsumura has the hammer playing four. I can play one more guard. Hey, one more. And on our sheet, Andrew, just coming up a little light, he was freezing to the one that was top four. There was a, a center guard up there a second ago. The run with Matt Dunstone, they played the run, managed to catch the other redstone that was on the side of the 12. So now for Andrew Nurpin, trying to put up another center guard here. Line's not bad, line's good. Needs to curl a little. Need to get to center line, need center line. Yep, yep, yep. Good sweep. Might be too early. Okay, I like it. It's pretty high, kind of seeing board. So the, the guard's a little high and didn't fully cover that red, Melissa, so it looks like uh, they're gonna make like a play at it here. And they were really trying to actually get to center or even an inch over. They wanted to show the other side of this red stone simply because of that blue one that's right behind it. So Just a good opportunity Just here for whoa. Kirk Myers to try and access that red stone Clean. right now. Not heavy. Clean up. Hard. And if they do, Jim Cotter in another Hard. heap of trouble. Right to it. Hard. Whoa, take the roll. Great Deuce. Go shot. Ahead. Always, Deuce, always. Keep going. You got to keep going. Great shot from Kirk wow, Myers, fantastic touch. And it is Matt Dunstone lying three spread out across the house. And this is, uh, I think Jim is all in here. Yeah, I was gonna say a bit of an aggressive call here from Jim Cotter. Wow. Of course we see Jim Cotter sponsored by the title sponsor of this event, New Floors Penticton. Brad Wood was, of course, the alternate for Jim Cotter for quite a number of years there and has been a longtime supporter of uh, this team who have been long the number one team in British Columbia, although there are certainly a, a few teams who are trying to stake that claim. Uh, Tyler Tardy, of course, is the top-ranked team in BC at the moment. Mine's pretty good. But it's Cotter who Earl, has Earl, been guys. to the last Earl. two Briars. <laughs> And so the center guard is made, but it's Dunstone lying three with hammer. I think the reason, you know, Jim felt he had to play that, you either have to make a double on the blue ones in the rings or freeze to a rock that's not even protected by anything. So that he felt that that was the best option. At least it forces Braden Moscowi to have to try and make one or two of these guards go away. So looking for the freeze now. Oh. 
Tyrell really wants to lock this one onto the face of that blue stone. Line's good. Room though. Room. Whoa, whoa. Looks hot. Yeah, this looks really hot. This has got a curl. Yep, got a yep, curl and yep. love to stop. That's a big miss there. It was a small opening for Tyrell Griffith and unfortunately just too heavy. Yeah, you, if you're going to miss there, the miss there is light. So this is uh, looking like trouble here for Little Cotter nervous, and speaking like of thunder. trouble. Well, there's no more trouble on Sheet C because the game's over. Our first, ex <laughs> our first exchange of gratitude, Glenn Howard right annihilating Sean Giel. I, I, like I don't even know how much they scored in the fourth, but uh, Giel has given it up. So Glenn Howard will go to four and one. Yeah, and so if uh, both Tyler Tardy and Matt Dunstone were to lose, then Glenn Howard would win this pool at four and one. thought was the uh that little trotcher you were calling yeah i just don't want to push I anything know. under here these nose isn't no does anything under here we come off of right blast and yeah like, like I, if it, he knows he's just gonna nose top right so we, is this better this this might be really worth a go moss with like easy and even if we do like i'm in and if easy, it's if it's easy. hanging a bit for us, do this. Like if we roll on this. Only thing we good. can't do is this, hey? That's no. really bad. I think that's a missed call on our end then. I think if we do like we we're in between shots too like too late then. So I need to hit about a quarter with easy, hey? Quarter with easy is real good. I think nose is the best like best miss. Yeah, it's just you're it's it's hard to be nose or a quarter, like no, you're likely in between. All so. right. What shot are you seeing? I think. I don't know. I, I, I think we know you threw this easy in the second end. To Just nose it and say. Uh, what make are you thinking of good? easy right there? You're thinking nose. I was thinking make this. Okay, let's make it. Make this good too. Quarter rock with easy. Easy. What a great conversation between Braden and Matt there. One option well, was to nose this here. redstone and uh, make Jim make something. The other option, which is the one they've called. Yeah, is best shots, quarter rock with easy. Like quarter stone, easy. Shot, so. And what they want to do is they want to push that blue stone that's Get on easy. the button back and spin their blue one off okay. to the right-hand side. The one rock that's going to hurt Matt Dunstone is actually their own stone that's on the button right now. So ideally, trying to move it out of the way at the same time eliminating the cotter stone. Shot. They went with plan Good. B, right on the nose. Yeah, that's not a bad spot at all. And this is just uh, one of those games for Cotter. It's, yeah, it's always so frustrating when you're not playing as well as you want to be playing and your opponent's making yeah. everything. It's, it's not an enjoyable day at the office, that's for sure. So we'll see if Jim can turn it around here. I would guess, Melissa, if he makes the shot he's calling, that, that might get them out of trouble, but he's got to make it. Kind of I would agree. As soon as, I'm thinking like here. Yeah. No, like Jim that. said yep. you can't really freeze because they've got like the slash the on the like one that was just thrown by Braden. Yeah. So it's like just a kind of a tap and your roll. Draw the button is probably about two or three feet slower than that. Okay. As you eight. This is not an easy shot for Jim. How's the speed, guys? Good clip, okay. <laughs> you know what, I'll feel it out. We want to tap this back a little bit and... Nothing like asking your front end, John, little what's the time. speed? <laughs> and they all just start Let's laughing because nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a great that. feeling for anyone, no. that's for sure. We can tap it, tap it a foot or two, kind of roll in underneath, be good. Create a little pocket for the next one. <laughs> So Jim Cotter's first. He's going to feel it out for his draw weight. Yeah, feel it out. Just Why see not? how it goes. Why Mine's not? Good. 
It's a fourth end. You think you would have an idea, but it's been tricky. Close. Close. Oh. Yep, yep. So tap and roll is the yep. ideal shot here for Jim Cotter. Oh, hard. Hard. This is oh, really hard. curling. Oh, the wait. weight's yeah, really hard. coming off it. Hard. No roll. No roll. Sit. Oh, and just right. rolls. Well, I don't know if it is, Tyrell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I want to help you here, but yeah. uh, I that's don't wishful, think it is. That's wishful thinking. Yeah, that's, I think so. It's just, ah, oh, we got to support our skip here. It's here, we can't get rid of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I get into here, it's not. The guys wondering if you just straight pick it. If you touch this on the way by. What if I try nose? That would be great if you could. Yeah, it's a little touchy, but. It is, yeah. Nose is the best shot. Yeah. I agree. So this is, is Matt and Braden just, just deciding how to the twist the knife yeah, here. Steel if you hit the guard. <laughs> yes. I was wondering if you just pick it, because I'm still kind of seeing hack as the way sure, to do sure. that. I... Yeah, no, I'm okay with that. Like how's here with hack look? Yeah, I like that. That with hack? I think so. I'll believe it, man. Yep. They talked about nose. They talked about just picking it with hack weight. I like hack here. I can throw it harder too if you guys like that. But. Okay. Yeah. I don't think they need to nose it. But out of there. Ideally, rolling as you heard him roll the shooter away. And then Jim has to freeze to the one that's on the button. Just think board will be close. Yeah, this is a shot away. where if Matt Dunstone okay. makes it okay. and Jim Cotter doesn't. Yikes. It's game over. So big shot here for Matt Dunstone, his first in the fourth. If he can make this Cotterstone go away, he'll be lying five with hammer. Board. How much? Clean. 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 Whoa. 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 Clean. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Yep. You don't usually see a pick Board. being played with just kind of a hack to board Go weight, but. Oh, they feel Go that's Kirk. what Go they Kirk. know. Oh, that's I think so we're going to get to nose here. They were trying to nose. Yeah. yeah. They changed it? No. So what, I think what the conversation was, was they were talking about picking it, but Matt said that he felt like even if they were picking it, they would be playing hack. So they might as well play for gotcha. nose if they're going to be throwing hack anyway. You I, be I believe was, the, yes. <laughs> I believe that was the discussion. Yeah. Matt was saying he just felt that peeling it was going to be really dangerous. All you got to do is get to the top of We were like there. I'm thinking probably like here. So I think that was the chatter. You were right. Uh, you're and awesome. uh, this is uh, freezing for your life right here. Yep. I think that I think should so. be okay. They know this line. They've played it a number of times, but it's still not a gimme. When you're drawing against hey five or trying to freeze against five. Nothing's ever a gimme when the game's on the line in the okay. fourth end. True. Yeah, freeze it in there. If we top it an inch or two, it's fine. Like, we don't want to be short of it because then they're sitting two. But if we lock it in there, they won't be able to get her out. <laughs> well, I don't think so, anyway. <laughs> so final stone for Jim Cotter here in the fourth does not have hammer and needs this freeze against five. Line's good, we got more room. Low early, line's good. Room. Right here, line's good. Line's good, bit of room. Line's good, top button. Top button, line's good, top button. This looks pretty darn good. Well, if you can, line's good, top button. Don't really want to move it. Nice shot from Cotter, but there might be a smash through the hole here, Melissa. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, wondering. Cool. He moved it maybe. Just like an inch too far. Inch too far. Yeah, I think so, eh? First shot? No. Great shot by Jim Cotter. What do you got, do you think? I'm seeing an inch, inch of ice with smooth. Yeah, I, a quarter I think's fine. I'd like, Looks like I'd you love can to fit hit a, a third rock to a through half. There. Just trying to nut it there, eh? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, picker's a bet. That's good with smooth. All right. Yeah, this one I think you don't actually want to throw it really hard because you end up probably hitting your blue on the right and coming on to your back blue, I'm thinking. 
So I think that's why they're playing this smooth weight. We've learned over the last few events, smooth is like uh, up normal for, for Dunstone. So the key here, just to find the right angle to push it through the hole. And if they do, this might be a count of six. So a huge shot here for Matt Dunstone, his last in the fourth, looking for a bundle. <laughs> the front end of Jim Cotter's team, I don't even think is watching right now. It's hard to watch. Again, one inch too oh, far, I table. think, for oh, Jimmy. Oh. Right off. Close. No, no, no. And so they Attaboy. kiss a few, nice and shot. that'll put five wow. up on the board. Nice, guys. Yeah. A great shot from Matt Dunstone, and that's all she wrote here on sheet D. A very quick exchange of gratitude here, and that'll go up on the board as an eight to one victory for Team Dunstone. So that is a, uh, a first place finish for Matt Dunstone here in Pool C. We'll see them in the playoffs later. Of course, we'll be back with more coverage later today, 3.30 Pacific time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll hope you'll join us for that one. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you then. Goodbye.